years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. This episode will be on Superman 2. What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> May, Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? Talking about the Richard Donner cut because from what I've researched and looked up, that version and cut seems to be the widely accepted movie. It even opens up with a disclaimer being that cut was supposed to be the original theatrical cut and not the two hour theatrical cut. So they watch both just to kind of compare the two near the end of this video. But I will be mostly talking about the Richard Donner cut. The first one and this second film are very closely like connected and I wouldn't be surprised if these are supposed to be shot from back to back. All I knew about this film going into it was two different cuts. Let's see which one's better. Now there's three main takeaways I have for the second film and I do like it better than the first one. Three main takeaways are Lois Lane, Clark Kent, and Superman's internal struggle, Zod and his little goonies. So Zod and his goonies, they get out of the fandom zone somehow. They just figure it out. Maybe through time, they get out. And once they get to Earth, there are some funny gags. There's number one moment where i'm like i'm scared by these villains at all it feels like they don't even try to it's just kind of like yeah we're just gonna make them kind of not jokes but make them be threatening but also have funny gag mostly throughout so when they get to earth and they're talking like the newscast they're on the news or like they don't know what the hell a tv is they look at these big giant monitors back in like the 80s early 80s like 70s like little stuff like that is what makes the film kind of go on i wasn't really bored throughout i was kind of bored in the first film i wasn't really bored at all in the second one at all it was funny throughout it was fun and it was good and his motive is is very much generic rule the world he doesn't want to destroy it until he learns the fact that superman does care about these humans but before that it was like rule earth because krypton is gone even lex luther tries to come in and kind of coddle them up be like hey i'll help you if you destroy superman like in the first one doesn't feel at all smart or red i don't feel scared whatsoever i don't know if these films are just kind of supposed to be hokey and not really like just kind of fun for kids i don't know it probably is but he was useless but it was nice to see him there planning things out but in the end kind of backfiring and then i really like lois lane's kind of whole thing and how shtick in this movie her figuring out Clark Kent isn't he Superman the very first scene of her I believe is her drawing glasses next to Superman comparing it to Clark Kent clearly it is him and she tests out something first thing that she does is jump out a goddamn window I'm Like, what the heck? Lady's crazy. And Superman, quote, well, Superman doesn't save her, but kinda does. Because she thinks Clark Kent is Superman. So he uses his speed to blow the air and laser eyes. Now, granted, someone should have seen him use his powers in public, but they don't, which is, you know, kinda ridiculous. But he saves Lois Lane and goes back to the top, saying that he's still just a normal, average male, just doing his job. Both crazy and hilarious at the same time. And then there's another moment at the waterfall, big bridge waterfall thing, where he, like, she, like, gets his glasses and just wipes it. She just looks at him and is like, oh, okay. And then that comes back all around because when I first saw that I was like oh no is this film not gonna have her figure out like he is indeed Superman and then we get to that room scene where she has a gun on him and I thought I know where this is going just shoots Clark Kent and then forces him to kind of reveal himself turns out it was just blanks but I really like this aspect one Lois Lane's pretty damn smart two the means and kind of methods and just the, her willingness to do anything to find out the identity and truth about Superman makes her kind of insane but also awesome and three scaring a person like that is scary as heck so I really like that interpretation of Lois Lane kind of the peak for her character in this movie she's just kind of typical Lois Lane throughout the rest of the film that's like the first 40 minutes of her finding out Clark Kent's real identity and it's great and then the last thing is Superman himself his internal battle of his father Jor-El and how he just wants to live a normal life he doesn't want to have the responsibilities of having you know this weight on his shoulders trying to save everyone on earth because it is a huge responsibility and I don't think anyone even Superman himself doesn't want that at all trying to save everyone it seems like an exhausting job thing to do and from Kent's perspective it doesn't seem fair at all he is on earth yes he has his extraordinary power but he wants to be normal and so he goes into the whole crystal ice thing and loses his powers and then there's this diner scene which comes back all around near the end where he gets his ass beat he bleeds and around this time he doesn't know the fact that Zod and his gang are coming so he has to regain his powers back go to the fortress and get his powers back now it is a bit kind of weird and dumb I won't lie a hologram of draw out touches him in person somehow and gets his powers back really it's just I don't know the sun gives him his powers shouldn't he just have his powers back and also speaking of the hologram the floating head hologram when Lex goes there by himself with test marker look pretty ridiculous and funny it was like hot damn can not find anything else other than his head up just prop up and kind of float it looked ridiculous and kind of funny and so just as you know he wants to be normal he to be normal at the wrong time because you know the world needs his help again and so he gets his powers back he stops zod but then he runs away like it's a decent fight but then he runs away which i don't know how i feel about that could be quite honest at the fortress of solitude so that lois lane and everyone can come back in lex does his lex things and try to you know play both sides he's just a little snake force him to go back 
back into the chamber or whatnot. They lose his powers, not knowing the fact that he changed something in the solitude so that the rest of them could lose their powers. The one big guy, he just falls down, which was hilariously just looked hilarious. It didn't look threatening at all. Then he gets Lois back, and then Lois punches the one girl Kryptonian, and then they get Lex back as well. And so it is a bit of an underwhelming kind of defeat, won't lie. Right from the very start, Zod and his group wasn't really a threat. They were just very kind of funny guys throughout most of this movie. And so in order to fix it one more time, he decides to time travel backwards and fix time going around the earth really fast and going back in time when he starts spinning around on the earth and it's like all right this is how he's gonna fix it now you could say that this just kind of makes the whole film useless him going back and redoing everything which is a waste of time of watching this film but i would argue that he did this because he wanted to go back to the norm he got exposed by lois lane he had to prove his own identity and so because of that he has a weakness and so by choosing to rewrite time he didn't become selfish he basically sacrificed his own normal needs in order to think of the bigger picture and be the symbol of hope to the rest of the world at least that's how i saw it now in terms of which cut i prefer the donica had the window dripping the theatrical had the river i just find the window jumping a bit more funnier just prefer that version because she just jumps off be like help superman and she thinks she's gonna be saved kind of is but she just drops on her ass as well and the theatrical having him reveal his identity to lois while i like that i just prefer the gun because it is a bit extreme now i can definitely see why people don't like the downer cut of the gun thing it's just so extreme to the point where it's kind of comical and really gonna go that far find out about the truth of clark Kent's identity being superman i very much prefer getting his power back in the theatrical where it's like a crystal i think a green crystal the Donica had the whole hologram thing, which is just hilariously kind of awful, won't lie. Okay, maybe not awful, but it just looks weird. Like nowadays where it's like, I don't know if I really like that. I'm really indifferent about that whole hologram stuff, but the crystal thing and the theatrical was good. And then one last other cut difference is how he resolved. So in the Donica, it's the whole time traveling circle thing. In the theatrical, it's a kiss. He kisses Lois Lane to freak her memory. That was just dumb. I was like, no, no, not gonna work for me. Donica, we ran a time works better for me because I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. He's we ran any time by spinning back so fast around the earth so while i like some aspects of the theatrical cut i think the donor cut has just way more that i like about it which is why i think the donor cut is like better cuts even though the theatrical wasn't even half that bad it's actually good but the donor cut is just better in my opinion so superman 2 40 years later still holds up in terms of the story and the sort of character development and work in this film holds up some like you know practicals flying stuff and cg stuff whatnot it doesn't really necessarily hold up but the narrative still hold up and still work today that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching